Hey, this is a Southern California Comics weekly video update. I'm Danny. Matt isn't here. No one is here. It's just me. There are people in the shop, but they're like all the way over there. And I'm going to tell you about this week's new comics. Stuff came out. Stuff is notable. Stuff is good. I don't think there's anything necessarily bad. Oh, uh, never mind. Um, yeah, so let's get started. Um, there seems to be a movie coming out this weekend, Kick-Ass 2, and, uh, yeah, Kick-Ass 3 is coming out in, uh, in comic form, so, you know, see the, uh, see part two in theaters, read part three, and wait for the third movie. We have both of the first two issues. I haven't checked it out. I, I checked out in, uh, during part one, which was, you know, I enjoyed it. The movie's better. Um... I guess you could read these and get excited about the movie. Yeah, they're out. They exist. That's all I got. Sorry. I'll have more to say about this next one, though. Suicide Squad number 23. Which, you know, this existed for like 19, 20 issues and was kind of bad. Then uh, the new writer, Alish Coat, took over, who's really good. He does some, some really crazy books for Image. And he just completely overhauled Suicide Squad. Like, it's same characters, but the writing is so good. Um, unfortunately, because it's DC Comics, he got fired for around this issue, issue 23, part 4 of his run. So, you, sh you should check it out. I think we have all the back issues. It's just a really good, uh, kind of, you know, ops comic. It's kind of dark, kind of funny. It's, if you liked, like, old school Suicide Squad from the 80s, like, this is basically done right well worth tracking down, even if it's only like four good issues out of Infinity. Speaking of which, Infinity is out. It's the new Marvel Comics event. Jonathan Hickman, uh, uh, Jim Cheung. Um, I haven't been keeping up with Hickman's superhero stuff lately, but you know, Avengers, his Avengers stuff is, was starting to get pretty cool. And now it's all coming together in this crossover event. And it's a big book. It's five bucks, a lot of pages. It's got the Inhumans, it's got the Avengers, it's of course got Thanos, so. Looks pretty cool. Yeah, that's that's an interesting way to do a video. I'm looking through a book while you're watching me look through a book. It's it's really meta. The, the Space Knights are in this, you guys. I might have to read that. I wasn't planning on it, but I'm enticed. Um, back to the indie comics. Saga number 13 is out. One of my favorite books coming out, like, really great space fantasy sci-fi. Like, if you're into Star Wars but thought it needed a bit more sense of pop culture, here it is. Like, um, Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples do, like, six issues of Saga at a time. So, like, they do six issues, take a few months off, and then come back, and it's, it's always welcome. It's always good. All right. Now on to trades. Um, first off, we have Amelia Cole in the Unknown World by uh, Adam P. Nave, DJ Kirkbride, Nick Brokenshire, and some other people. Um, this originally came out digitally through Monkey Brain Comics, and now IDW is putting out the collections, and this is the good stuff. Like, it, it hits that kind of Buffy the Vampire Slayer part of my brain that just likes strong female characters and, like, adventure comics. It's basically about so there's two worlds, the magic world and the normal world. And our hero, Amelia Cole, goes into a third world. The uh, eponymous unknown world. So, yeah. It, it's really fun. Lots of action, lots of cool characters. Lots of weird references in the background. I'm, I'm a big fan of the art by Nick Brokenshire. It's got a golem made of uh, junk. Yeah, just junk. A junk golem. It's really good. It's a really good read. Twenty bucks. Come pick it up. We have a copy. Now something uh, a little more old school. This is uh, Xenozoic by Mark Schultz. Um, this, these originally came out as like Xenozoic Tales, or better, it's better known as Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, which was a cartoon that existed. I never saw it, but I knew it was on. Um, yeah. Um, Flesk Publications put out this complete collection of everything he ever did for it. And it's a really good read. 
Like, if you just like pulpy adventure stuff with dinosaurs and a, and a barrel chested dude with a gun, solid stuff. It's got like a Betty Page uh, sort of foil to the, the barrel chested pulp hero. It's got lots of dinosaurs. It's got kind of a post apocalyptic. The world, the whole world is turned into Jurassic Park kind of thing going on. I'm into it. Like, I've read the whole thing. Like, it's, it's came out like maybe last year, but I guess they put out a new edition and it's worth the money. Just a whole heavy pile of comics. Xenozoic. That's it. I'm out. I got nothing. But if you follow me to a different section of the store, I might have something for you. Come. All right, tripod. We'll be right back. Hey, we are now in the vertigo section of the uh, trade paperback uh, section, which, if you know your store geography, is not very far away from the previous segment's location. Yeah, I'm just going to talk to you about some vertigo books I like. You know, they're DC's Mature Readers imprint, so, you know, no kids allowed, obviously. I think teenagers are okay. Mature teenager, you know, they aren't really limited to an age, so. Some, some of my favorite stuff comes out from Vertigo, or came out. So, yeah, all the, all the, all the Vertigo books I'm going to talk about are over, so you can just start at volume one. I got a convenient number one on the spine, and, well, that one doesn't, but others do. Yeah, you can just start at number one and... Go forward until it's over, and then you don't have to read anything else. Pretty good. Um, so one of my favorite Vertigo books is Shade the Changing Man. It's written by Peter Milligan. Uh, this one's drawn by Chris Piccolo, but a lot of people have worked on it. Sean Phillips. Yeah, lots of awesome people. Um, it's originally a Steve Ditko creation, but Peter Milligan uh, kind of rebooted it into something much, much stranger, if that's possible. I, I guess the closest comparison you can make is Doctor Who. It's like Doctor Who if Doctor Who was weird instead of, like, whimsical. Like, he has a bunch of different personas. Like, every handful of issues, he ends up dying and just resurrecting into a different form. Like, he's always, like, he's always a red-haired dude, but he's got like, a different style. He's like a, it's like a David Bowie thing. If Doctor Who was David Bowie and completely insane, that's what Shade the Changing Man would be. Peter Milligan also rebooted The Human Target, which I think everyone now just knows as some Fox drama that got cancelled two seasons in. But it's super good. It's about a secret agent who sort of assumes the identities of other people to protect them. And because it's a Peter Milligan comic, that stuff drives him crazy. And he tends to forget who he is, or who he originally was, as he occupies this person's identity. It's really good, really action-y really existential. So one of my favorite writers is, if you watch the videos, you know, it's Grant Morrison. He does awesome superhero comics, he has really weird comics. He combined the two with Doom Patrol, which a lot of Vertigo books are reboots of like old DC properties. Grant Morrison took Doom Patrol, which was already a weird book. They were like the original X, the original X-Men slash Fantastic Four, just very strange. And he made them even weirder with like Dadaist supervillains and like I believe the second trade is called The Painting That Ate Paris. It's super weird, but it's also super funny. You know, Robot Man's there, Negative Man's there, all your favorites, because you know, Doom Patrol is somebody's favorite somewhere. Yeah, they're all here. And it's very strange. Now they don't just do reboots at Vertigo. They do they do a lot of original stuff. That's kind of the thing. Mature creator owned comics. And the major Grant Morrison creator on comic is The Invisibles, which is basically the original Matrix. It's about this cell of, like, uh, you know the Matrix? Those guys, like, fight the cosmic bad guys who are controlling the universe? Well, that's what they, that's what these guys do. And it's super cool and super, like, 90s club culture kind of thing. And it covers a whole ton of ground. It's like, you can see the Matrix in there. You can see, like, weird bug creatures. Man, it's 
the problem is it's really hard to explain too. So, but there's also a lot of shooting, and yeah, it's it's definitely an action comic too. In addition to being like the cerebral, like psychedelic fantasy thing. Okay, that's enough old stuff. Let's let's jump into the 2000s at least. Uh, Sweet Tooth is pretty good. It's by Jeff Lemire and just Jeff Lemire. He writes, he draws. Nowadays he's doing like a bunch of DC superhero books, but the stuff he writes and draws himself is always better. This one's about sort of this post-apocalyptic world where this little dude with horns is just hanging out in a cabin with his grandpa, dad, I forget. But then he has to venture out into the woods and we see like the rest of this world and lots of people with antlers or horns or whatever. It's really interesting stuff and it's really... Like Vertigo tends to be like really gothic stuff like like Sandman or Sandman Mystery Theater. Really dark, really... You don't have to wear black to, to read Vertigo, but it certainly helps. And, uh, and Sweet Tooth is not quite in that vein, which, which makes it even more interesting to me. It's just like a very strange, very specific comic. But they, they don't just do fantasy, of course. They, they've, they've done a lot of crime stuff and dramas and such, and Scalped is one of the best of that lot. Because it's, it's like if The Sopranos were about an Indian reservation, basically. It's by Jason Aaron, R.M. Guerra. Jason Aaron, you know, does the awesome Marvel comics, but this is, this is his baby, and it's super good and super entertaining. It's also super violent, because, you know, we're all into that, right? Yeah, those are my favorite Vertigo books. And there are many more behind me at the shop, so come check it out. Look for a number one on the spine and just get started. There's, I wouldn't say there's something for everyone, but there's a lot of things for a lot of people. That's, that's the best you can do, really. Oh, you're still here. I figured, I figured you just kind of leave. But okay, um, yeah, I'll see you next week. Hopefully Matt will be here, so I have someone to bounce off of. If not, I will just stand in front of a camera and ramble again. I'm, I'm fine with that. I hope you're fine with that. I can see you going for that X. Stop it. Oh, right, that doesn't work. Camera. All right.